where the Mac Lab was located was a professional medical building. Yes. Uh, Medico locks, and you can attest to the the, the oh, yes. unpickable nature of oh, a Medico yes. lock. They were Medco locks, I remember that. And in the lab, <clears throat> Phillips actually carried a key that was the door key for all the the rooms inside of the lab. And one night, uh, after a long day of testing and where nothing really happened, I guess something spectacular happened because we got a call very early the next morning. It said it looked like a psychic tornado had hit the Mac Lab. Objects were moved around, spoons and forks were bent. Uh, there was actually uh, things that had happened inside of a sealed laboratory that they had had. And they were very amazed by this and they really um, uh, kind of put that or, or gave credit to the fact that it was like, in their own words, a psychic tornado had hit, but it was the cause of us building up all of our energies that day and being frustrated by not having it work and it hit at night. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the fact was, mm -hmm. I couldn't pick the locks. As you know, I used to be an escape artist. I couldn't pick the locks to get into the lab, but I could leave one of the windows open. And Steve and I at two in the morning slipped into the lab, twisted all the metal we could find to move the objects around, changed the times on the clocks, and then surreptitiously got out of the building without leaving any trace of that. And the next morning when you came in, to see the site of the crime, you carefully lock the, the window again. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope. Remember, doors are made to keep people out, yes. much like a safe, yeah. not made to keep you in. True. So the doors would lock behind us as we left. So we entered through the window, left through the doors, everything was locked ah, up, the scene of the crime was I pristine. See, I did not know that. Yeah. That's a very good time. I also did that, tried to do that once on an individual trip when I was down there. Mm -hmm. Did the same entry method did the same, committed the same crime, got ready to leave, looked at the window to make sure it was locked, and there's two big black foot marks, because it was a garden level office, where I had crawled in through the window from the bottom of my shoes, down the wall. Fortunately, there was a supply closet with a lot of paper towels and 409, so at 2.30 in the morning, I was washing the walls of the Mac Lab, and to this day, they probably don't know that that happened. They probably haven't washed them since, either. <laughs> probably haven't. For all we know. <laughs> but <clears throat> now you see, folks, we're preparing this bit of a videotape, an impromptu videotape, as you see, in order that you can begin to recognize just how easy it was for these so-called psychics, the two kids that went into the Mac Lab there. Uh, it was named after McDonald, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Uh, they got in there, they went in there, then they got in there later on by surreptitious means, as you've just heard. They got in there and they did these things and they did stuff right in front of the scientists as well. They were so simple and direct, but the scientists never caught them. Because as Mike said earlier, they don't look for the, 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 the rats that they're using experiments or the rabbits or whatever. They don't look for them to play tricks on them, but human beings will do that. Now, do you recall the thing where you had a Polaroid camera and a picture was taken, I believe it was, it was a picture of you and a ghost appeared on your shirt? Do you Actually, that? It, it was my face that was ghosted oh, on the sweater of somebody else. Ah, exactly right. So yeah, yes. it was a black sweater. Yep. And you took a picture with the Polaroid camera and you made a double exposure right. and the double exposure was of you. Yes. It was, it was actually angled from the camera down here, angled up at my face. I see. And then just the picture taken, and then we set the camera there. Waited for somebody else then to take a picture of somebody. Ah. So we didn't touch the camera as far as they knew. The Ooh. magic was already done exactly. 15 minutes exactly. earlier. Because in those days you could make a double exposure on a Polaroid. But they didn't know that. They didn't know that. They didn't try to take a test picture first and then do the subject picture. So instead, once wow. they pulled it out, let it develop, then there's this ghost-like image that was there, that it was distorted just enough you couldn't tell who it was. Another miracle. Yeah. And of course, they raved over that. Oh, of course. of course. Of course. Of yeah. course. Um, something simple as, uh, as the, if you remember the old uh, bell jar. Oh, yes. Which was, the, which was a glass dome set with a wooden yeah. base and a yeah. spindle. Mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. They coated the bottom with aluminum. I don't know why. Um, trying to make it non-magnetic, but it was a paper rotor and you'd set this bell jar on top of the uh, the ridge of this, basically like a, uh, one of those old uh, 
a clock, watch, or a, clock, uh, yeah, or a clock crystal, screen, yeah, and things. and all of a sudden we were able to start moving the rotor inside of there. How did you do it, Mike? Well, you tell our audience. <laughs> I can't come up with that. I, I can't claim credit for that technique. It was actually Steve. Oh, okay. And what he learned was if you set it in and you didn't really seat that bell jar inside of there, it would actually leave a little bit little of a gap. crack. And little just gap. by licking his lips, keeping his mouth open just a little bit, he could breathe on that. The air would hit the jar, go right underneath the crack, and cause that rotor to spin. And if he turned his head to the other side, he would go, he the, could other go the other way. So now, needless to say, that was very impressive. And, and this is time. on the, uh, the oh, this is on the tape. Labs, uh, yeah, on the MacLab tape. Yeah, on the MacLab tape. Absolutely yeah, yeah. right. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. It's, it, and it was something just as simple as blowing on. Yeah, but we know other psychics. I mean, professional psychics out there who do it for. I was going to say for real. They do it for real money. Uh, the professional psychics out there use tricks very similar to that in many cases. I'm really, you know, it's kind of disappointing that you say that because. Uh, we never got paid for ours, and I thought we were pretty good. I thought I maybe, sent you a check. Maybe we should. <laughs> maybe we should have gone in business for ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you're in another <laughs> business right now, but and we might not mention that. But the point is, uh, yeah, yes, that's the point, of course, folks. That, uh, well, I myself could have become a psychic a long, long time ago if I'd had the uh, the nerve and if I'd had the the will to be deceptive and really cheat and lie to people. As a magician, yes, I cheat and lie, but I do it for purposes of entertainment. That's what we do in the trade, Absolutely of course. Absolutely right. And uh, though uh, Mike is no longer a magician, you don't have to worry, don't guard your wallet. Well, oh, hey. Are you looking for this? Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, I must <laughs> say that I think we're all fortunate that the Alpha Kids didn't decide to take off and go out on their own, because when Discover Magazine and Time Magazine and all of these these, these national uh, media outlets featured you, and you were on the Today Show, mm -hmm. and uh, at our own 60 Minutes special. On 60 Magic Minutes or special, yeah. that's right. Magic or Miracle. Magic or Miracle, that's true. Uh, all of these things, if you had maintained the masquerade, you two guys could have become a great team and gone out there and made a small fortune. Now, Banachek, Steve Shaw, is doing very well for himself as a mentalist, mm -hmm. but as you know, He's very careful to say that all of what you've seen here is accomplished by trickery. I am not a mentalist, or, pardon me, I'm not a mind reader, I'm not a psychic, I'm a mentalist. And a mentalist simply means a magician who performs in such a way that you think it's all done with the mind. That's not true, folks. And an uh, honest mentalist out there will confess that to you very easily and should admit it right up front. Mike. I'm not going to keep you much longer because uh, I want to save the rest for the book. Okay, okay absolutely. But uh, listen, it's been uh, a great you, pleasure. You, I don't think you've plugged the book yet, though. Maybe you should. No, plug no I should it one plug the book, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thank you for coming by. It's a great Randy, pleasure to see you after all these years. On behalf of myself, I know I speak for Steve, and I know I speak for the community out there, the skeptical community. We wouldn't be in this position without you. Without you. <clears throat> well, excuse me, without your guidance, I'm getting a little choked up. Without your leadership, without your drive, your determination. Uh, as I said, it was 27 years ago that we completed Project Alpha, and yep. you've only gotten more, uh, more driven, uh, more entrenched, and more committed to this cause. So, yes, well, on behalf of all the skeptics out there, I'd like to thank you for well, your thank leadership. Thank you very much, Mike. It's been a pleasure talking with Mike Edwards, one of the original Alpha Kids. This was an impromptu tape just bundled together this afternoon with the assistance of our, our very fine videographer here. And um, we, we thank everybody for their patience over the last few minutes. And if you have comments to make on this, I'd be very, we'll be, both be very pleased to hear your comments. Meanwhile, my book will be coming out in about a year or so. Oh, I didn't... Uh, I was going to remind you that's about very that, true, that's very a good true. plug. Thank you, thank you very much, my dear. Thanks. But uh, I ask you to take a look at that and see the, the true story of the whole Alpha hoax. It's a good story. It's a major chapter in my book, and I hope you'll be reading it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm James Randi. This is Mike Edwards, and we bid you bye-bye. We thank you for watching this latest episode of James Randi Speaks. 
For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.